Hi, this is Tom from zerodefinals.com. In this video, I'm going to be going through polymyalgia rheumatica. And you can find written notes on this topic at zerodefinals.com slash PMR or in the rheumatology section of the Zero Definals Medicine book. So let's jump straight in. Polymyalgia rheumatica is an inflammatory condition that causes pain and stiffness in the shoulders, the pelvic girdle, and the neck. There are strong associations with giant cell arteritis, or temporal arteritis, and the two conditions often occur together. Both conditions respond very well to treatment with steroids. There's very good, nice clinical knowledge summaries on polymyalgia rheumatica, and I suggest you read them before treating patients. However, there's a summary here just to help with your learning and your revision. So with PMR, it's very important to talk about the demographics of the patients that are affected. It usually affects older adults above the age of 50 years. It's more common in women and also more common in Caucasians. So in your exams, the typical patient will be around 60 years old, female and white. So what are the core features? Well, the clinical knowledge summaries from NICE give us some core features that can be used to determine which patients have polymyalgia rheumatica. And these features should be present for at least two weeks before we make the diagnosis. Firstly, there'll be bilateral shoulder pain that may radiate to the upper arms and down to the elbow. Bilateral pelvic girdle pain. So this is pain throughout the whole pelvic girdle and hips. The pain is worse with movement. It interferes with sleep. And there's profound stiffness in these joints, which typically lasts at least 45 minutes in the morning before they're able to get the joints moving and loosened up. Some other features are systemic symptoms like weight loss, fatigue, low-grade fever and low mood. There can be some upper arm tenderness, carpal tunnel syndrome, and there may be pitting edema. So let's talk about the differential diagnosis. One of the key challenges is to exclude other conditions that can cause similar symptoms and also not to miss other diagnoses. There's a long list of differentials of symptoms that can cause similar features. And some examples are osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, systemic lupus erythematosus, myositis or inflammation in the muscles due to conditions like polymyositis, dermatomyositis or medications like statins, cervical spondylosis, or basically wear and tear in the cervical spine, adhesive capsulitis of the shoulders, hyper or hypothyroidism, osteomalacia, and fibromyalgia. So all of these conditions you need to think about in somebody presenting with these generic symptoms. So how do we establish a diagnosis? Well, the diagnosis is mainly based on clinical presentation and the response to treatment with steroids. Other conditions need to be excluded in order to make a diagnosis of polymyalgia rheumatica. Testing for inflammatory markers like ESR, plasma viscosity and CRP can be helpful and these are usually raised. However, normal inflammatory markers don't rule out polymyalgia rheumatica. The NICE clinical knowledge summaries advise a number of investigations prior to starting steroids to exclude other conditions. And this would include a full blood count, urea and electrolytes, liver function tests, a calcium which can be raised due to hyperparathyroidism or cancer or could be low in osteomalacia, serum protein electrophoresis which is useful for screening for myeloma or other protein disorders, thyroid stimulating hormone to test for thyroid function, creatine kinase to test for myositis, rheumatoid factor to look for rheumatoid arthritis and a urine dipstick. Some additional investigations you might want to consider are antinuclear antibodies to test for systemic lupus erythematosus, anti 
CCP antibodies for rheumatoid arthritis, a urine Benz Jones protein for myeloma, and a chest x ray to look for lung pathologies like lung cancer, which might be associated with dermatomyositis, and also for mediastinal abnormalities. So, how do we treat PMR, polymyalgia rheumatica? Well, the mainstay of treatment is with steroids. And the NICE clinical knowledge summaries have clear guidelines on the steroid regime, which is worth following if you're treating patients. And this is a summary just to help with your understanding. So initially, patients are started on 15 milligrams of prednisolone per day. This is usually taken in the morning because steroids can boost your energy levels and also prevent you from sleeping if taken too late on in the day. You would assess the patient one week after starting steroids. And if there's a poor response in symptoms, it's probably not polymyodramatica and you need to consider an alternative diagnosis and stop the treatment with steroids. You'd assess them again three to four weeks after starting steroids. And at this point, you would expect at least a 70% improvement in symptoms and also the inflammatory markers to return to normal. And if this is the case, you can make a working diagnosis of polymyodramatica. If at three to four weeks of treatment, there's been a good response, then you can start reducing the steroid dose using a reducing regime. And the aim is to eventually get the patient off the steroids. So you use 15 milligrams until the symptoms are fully controlled, then step down to 12.5 milligrams for three weeks, then 10 milligrams for four to six weeks, and then reduce by one milligram every four to six weeks after that. And if you find that the symptoms are reoccurring whilst on a reducing regime, they may need to increase the dose or stay on the dose longer before reducing again. It can take one to two years to fully wean the patient off steroids. If there's doubt about the diagnosis or difficulty in controlling the symptoms or difficulty weaning them off the steroids or the steroids are required for more than two years, then it's worth referring them to a rheumatologist for specialist management. It's very important when somebody's on long-term steroids to implement some additional measures to protect them against the negative effects of steroids. And you can use the helpful mnemonic DON'T STOP to remember these measures. DON'T refers to making them aware that they will become steroid dependent after three weeks of treatment and they shouldn't stop taking the steroids due to the risk of adrenal crisis if the steroids are abruptly withdrawn. And then STOP is a mnemonic for S for sick day rules. So you need to discuss increasing the dose of steroids if they become unwell. T is for treatment card. So you need to provide a steroid treatment card which they keep on them that alerts other people that they're steroid dependent. For example, if they become unresponsive, paramedics or doctors can see the steroid treatment card and realise they may need a dose of steroids. O is for osteoporosis prevention. And you need to consider osteoporosis prophylaxis whilst on steroids. And this can be with bisphosphonates and calcium and vitamin D supplements because long-term steroids thin the bones. And finally, P is for proton pump inhibitor. And steroids can cause irritation of the stomach lining and increased acid secretion. So consider gastric protection with a proton pump inhibitor such as omeprazole or lansoprazole. Thanks for watching this video. If you found it helpful, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to follow the channel and find out as more videos come out. You can also find written notes with illustrations on the Zero to Finals website at zerodefinals.com. And on the website, you can also find a podcast that can help you learn on the go, questions to test your knowledge, and the Zero to Finals books. Follow the link in the description to pick up a copy of the Zero to Finals medicine book. It contains detailed and concise notes on 10 specialties in medicine and it's designed specifically to contain the key facts and guidelines you need to know for your medical exams. With mnemonics and tom tips to help you learn exactly what you need to know for your exams without all the hassle. Follow the links to find out more.